All right, let's talk about how do we get better hip rotation through impact zone. So when I work with my clients, I see lots of issues with the hips rotating through the impact zone, and that can cause issues in lots of places if we can't rotate enough. Now, there's different amounts of rotation depending on what player you are. And if you're joining this slide, this will help you understand if you have enough rotation or if you need to gain more rotation. So I'm gonna explain if this video, if you really need the help, or really, if, you just, if you're already doing it correctly, I wanna be able to show you that. So let's walk through this. So here we go. So hip rotation, you're gonna see different amounts on tour. So on tour, you're gonna to see some players that have the hips this much open, some more neutral, some just a little bit. And it just depends. Now, if you're more of an arm swing player, we usually see less hip rotation. We usually see the hips closer to about right here because the arms are passing more and a little bit more passive. There are some players that have a little bit more of an arm swing than they do rotation, and that's fine, but we always need some rotation, but just depends on the player you are. Now, you see some players where they have a lot of rotation. They look like this, they're way open, those players are, are very much dominant in the rotation of their body. And so those players have to rotate a lot. Now, we're not gonna discuss if you should have an arm swing or a body rotation swing. That's not what we're discussing here. Mainly today, we're gonna talk about, for the people that are scoopers at impact like this, right, that, that are affected by that, or that are struggling with face control, they're kind of losing it all over the place. This is who this is really for. So also to tell you if you need this or not. So what we need to stabilize the club face is the longer the hips keep rotating through impact, along with the chest, but today we're talking about the hips, the longer the hips turn through impact, the more stable that face is gonna be. Because if our hips and our upper body stop too soon on the downswing, and I mean they stop rotating, something has to give. And usually what that means is, is as we stop rotating, well the club head's gotta keep accelerating. So what ends up happening, is we accelerate the club like this and we add a bunch of loft at impact. So if we don't have a lot of hip rotation and upper body rotation, if we don't have enough, let me say it that way, the tendencies are to create a scoop and to have some face control problems. Because now when the arms get involved and the wrists get involved from behind the ball, we, we lose a lot of control of the club face, okay? So we have to make sure we have control of that club face. So rotation through and past impact gives us that stability of the club face. So if your hips are dead square at impact, meaning that if you look at your swing and your hips are dead square like this, you don't see your left butt cheek at impact, that's typically a problem. We want at least a little bit, you wanna be able to see the left butt cheek being exposed on this down the line view to getting open. If you're already here, you probably have plenty of hip rotation already. But if you're the guy that just has a little bit that feels like they need more, or if you're dead square, then we need to increase that rotation through impact. But first we have to diagnose why are you not getting rotation through impact. It could just be because you've always been an arm swing player and you never really forced yourself to rotate the hips. Sometimes it's a mobility issue. So the first thing I wanna cover is help you define if it's a mobility issue. So I want you to take a six iron and then some other golf club, and you're gonna set this on the ground. Now the six iron is the perfect angle to, to to show if we're having enough hip rotation or not. So you're gonna face the iron like this on the ground. So you're gonna face it just like this on the ground. You see the club pointing this way, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your other club and get it on the same angle as the bottom of the club, just like this, okay? And what I want you to do is we're gonna see how much this hip can actually rotate. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna balance all your weight on your, on your lead leg, your left leg, if you're right-handed player, but your lead leg. Okay, I don't care what this foot does, it's just, it, Keep it on the ground, but it's there to make sure you don't fall over. So stand tall, put your hands on your hips, don't look down, and you're gonna rotate as far as you can to the left. And what you're looking for is you're trying to see if these two little bones or your hips get to this line right here, this club right here, going this way. If your hips don't turn very far and they don't get even with that line, then there's a mobility issue in that hip joint. Now we can work around that. But it's good to know that because it, if somebody keeps telling you, turn your hips more, turn your hips more, well, maybe you physically can't do that, okay? So set up again like this, make sure the toe is straight forward, it's not flared open, turn your hips this way, 
and see if you can get your hips even with it or more than it. And if you can get it even or more, you have enough hip mobility, right? But if you don't get past at least to that line, then there's some kind of limitation there. Whether the muscles are, there's a muscular problem, you're just really tight. It could be a joint dysfunction problem. That's not to my expertise to find out. I just need to find out if you have a mobility problem. If there is a mobility problem, you might seek a fitness professional. You might seek a PT or a chiropractor to have them look at that hip to kind of see what's going on, why you don't have that rotation. I would highly recommend that. If you want me to come screen you, then you can book a lesson with me and I can do these screens to see how your body, how, uh, I guess the functional fitness of your body, golf functional fitness. So are you fun is your buff, is your body functioning like a golfer? That's what I'm trying to say. So I can help do that. It's called the body swing connection. It's a TPI screen. Titleist performance Institute is what TPI stands for. It's part of what I'm certified in to teach you or to train or to check if you are rotating enough through your hips. Okay. So let's just say you're the golfer that has a hip mobility problem. Let's start with that person. If you have a hip mobility problem, then what we need to do is either A, we need to fix the joint and get that mobility back, or B, if we can't do that, we need to artificially create more mobility, quote unquote. It's not really creating more mobility, but what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your lead toe and you're gonna start pointing it towards the target, okay? So if I'm facing this way, I want you to start pointing that toe more open, because what happens is, if I keep this toe square and I rotate, okay, that's as far as I can go. But if I turn that toe towards the target, look at how much more room I have to rotate, okay? So by flaring this front toe open, getting it pointing more towards the target, and you find what's comfortable, the more you open it, the easier it is to turn. You just find what's more comfortable. That's going to help us be able to get the hips more cleared through the impact zone. If you have hip mobility problems and you're tight, you definitely do not need a square toe. You need some sort of flare. And I'll let you decide how much you wanna do, depending on how much you need to get, you need to rotate through the impact zone, okay? So set up, take your normal setup and just flare that toe and you can see, point that toe more towards the target and that's really gonna help you feel those hips get more open through the impact zone and just start making some swings. Okay, definitely felt like it was a lot easier to get those hips open and through the shot because I had that toe flared open, okay? So that would be step number one. Now, if that doesn't work, and it's, it either is or it isn't a mobility problem. Even if you flare this toe open, you have a mobility problem. Okay, you still need to do that. But then let's say it's not a mobility problem, but you're still struggling to get the hips open. Well, then it's coming down to you just never have taught your hips to rotate. So what I wanna do now is walk you through a few drills to help you get those hips open. So you can use a chair, you can use your golf bag. Obviously, you may not have a chair in the driving range, so you may just need to use your golf bag. If you, have a, if you have a stand bag or a carry bag, I'm sorry. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this behind you. Okay, you're gonna get set up and you're gonna put this behind your left butt cheek. So I'm gonna back this up. It's kind of hard to get it perfect. That's pretty good. Okay, so this top of the chair is touching my left butt cheek, my lead butt cheek, okay? And what we wanna do is through the impact zone, we wanna feel like we're pushing it back and into the chair. Just like this. So this is just a cool little chair drill to kind of help you have some kind of feeling of what it feels like to push into that chair like this and get it open. But you're gonna feel like this hip is driving straight back and open. No sliding, straight back and open, just like that. So here we go again, straight back and open. You're gonna push into that chair. I find it, it's more helpful to do half swings when you're first working on this and then record your swing to see if you're doing it correctly. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna just do a couple little like punch shots here. I'm gonna go here, push, and we're gonna try to see if we can't get those hips open. So little short shots here, through. And I'm really driving that hip back and open to get through the shot. That's a great drill to start feeling it. If you need a little bit extra visual help, you can take an alignment rod like this, okay? You can put it through your belt loops. I would suggest one shorter. I don't currently have a really short one. I wish I did, but I don't. And what you're gonna do with this is put it through your belt loops and you're gonna try to force this end out of the way and behind you. You could even put the chair back there and feel like you're gonna try to whack that chair. See right there? 
So I'm gonna set up and I'm gonna feel like I can whack that chair really soon. So as this club goes back, you're gonna come down, feel like you whack that chair like that. You can hear that audio sound and that'll help you get your hips more open. Now again, guys, if you already have your hips to at least here through the impact zone, you can see two butt cheeks, you may not need more unless you're a big hooker of the golf ball and you need some help keeping the club face square longer, then you could rotate a little longer to keep the face square. But majority of the time, people with that issue, it's a release issue, meaning you have a flip hook, flip hook release. We'll get into that stuff kind of later. So again, so here, boom. So let's hit a little shot here. It's a little short swing, so short. Okay, I barely nicked that at the very top of it, but you can see I really got those hips nice and open. So I would start small and work your way up. So start with small swings, so swings that are real short, like right in here, boom. And then slowly make the swing longer, but you've got to look at video evidence, guys. I talk about this all the time. You have to use video evidence to see if you're actually opening your hips. And what you're looking for in the down the line view is you want to start seeing two butt cheeks. Okay, you want to start being able to see both sides of your rear end. That just means you're opening up more and more through impact. Okay, now I, ha I typically have some questions about the lead knee and how the lead knee, lead knee should behave. Let's discuss that a little bit. So as you rotate through, if the hip is driving backwards like this, then this leg should naturally straighten. Now, I'm not saying you should straighten the knee. Okay, I don't want you actively trying to lock the knee out and straighten it out. But if the hip's moving properly, you're gonna notice that that leg gets straighter. If you are a knee buckler like this through the impact zone, how can you rotate your hips if your knees are buckling this way? Does that make sense? So for some of you, it could be a knee problem. We could not be rotating the hips appropriately or rotating the, or getting the knees clearly out of the way. Now that could also lead into some other mobility problems. It could be, there could be a, a joint dysfunction problem in the knee or the hip, not allowing that hip to open. I see a lot of the knee buckling through the impact zone with people who have really tight hips. It could be the hip flexor, it could be the joint, it could be the glute not firing properly. But if we're seeing a lot of this knee buckle, then we know you're gonna have a difficult time rotating. So flaring this foot open usually helps my clients with that knee buckle. Okay, so flaring that toe open a little bit and, feel, and practice turning the hip in a way that allows that lead knee to straighten instead of buckle. Because when you buckle like this, it brings you up and out of the shot and causes all sorts of other problems. And you can't rotate doing it this way, so then you end up being a flipper of the golf club, which then you have no control over the club at all. So feel like you're pushing that butt back, that this le your lead leg should naturally straighten as you come through, and then you finish here. So don't try to straighten the knee. Just try to rotate the hip appropriately to allow the knee to straighten. And that should be working backwards and through the ball. I would say I run into people that kind of knee buckle, probably, oh, two out of 10 golfers that have that, knee, that severe knee buckle. So it's, it's fairly common. So it can be fixed. Now, a lot of times when I see the knee buckle, it comes from a joint dysfunction problem. There's something wrong going on with the, with the hip not being able to rotate. And so toe flare tends to help, but we'll, to get rid of it completely, we'll need to do some kind of work within the pelvis. So if you, if you think this might be a problem of yours, shoot me an email and we'll figure out, I, I wanna chat with you and figure out some kind of solution for you to help you with that. And whether that be a lesson with me where we kind of go through, I look at the golf swing and then I prescribe you to go somewhere or, you know, I refer you to somebody that may be the case. All right. So I'm going to talk about one more thing. I do want to leave this open for questions. If anybody has any questions, let me put, uh, let's see here. Okay. Put that up there. So please ask any questions if you have any while I'm finishing up talking about this last little point. So, when you, when you work on hip rotation, okay, you had that toe flared, you're driving it back. Let's talk about ramping up speed, the practice portion of it. I think it's important to start small, short, and slow, and really focus on the hip rotation and good movement quality, and using some sort of evidence like video to check and see if you're actually doing it correctly. And I would just work your way through it. So here, real slow and then check on video to see if you're getting those hips open. I think that's important. 
that you do that because that's really going to help you get the move right. Because here's what you have to understand. The brain is gonna wanna go back to what it knows and that's the hips not turning and the hands flipping. It's just, that's just what, what it's going to do. So if you don't want, if you wanna make the change, you have to go slower to give your brain enough time to make the change. So let's say that was 30% power. Now I'm gonna jump up to 40% power. Keep the same back swing, so short, a little bit faster. And then I'm gonna go a little bit faster with this short swing. And after I get to a pretty good speed with the short swing and I can still get it right, then I'll lengthen the back swing, but slow down again. Okay, so now I'm gonna lengthen the back swing a little bit. Still have my feedback tool here to see if I'm pushing my hips open. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to about, I don't know, chest height here. I'm, still, I'm gonna go really slow, so here. Okay, it's still pretty slow. That's about, I don't know, 30, 40% power. And then I'm gonna continually ramp up the speed as I am proving that I'm getting it right through video evidence. So here we go again. So half back swing, that's a little bit more speed. You can see those hips getting open. I don't typically have a problem getting open, that's not me. I'm pretty good about that. Um, but anyways guys, if you have any more questions, please shoot a comment below. You can shoot me an email, my email's below as well in the description. I enjoyed helping you guys. If you have any more, like if you have any video requests, please request some videos. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Also hit the thumbs up button that helps other people see my video so I can reach more people and help more golfers because I really want to help everybody that I can because I enjoy this game. It's my passion. I love teaching it. I don't complain about my job. I, I have the luxury of teaching golf for a living. So besides that, guys, I hope you all had a good time. I don't see any comments on there. It looks like everybody's good to go. So I'll see you next time. Peace.